Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about backpropagation versus forward propagation. It is mostly known as forward versus reverse mode automatic differentiation, but the concepts here go beyond just automatic differentiation, they also apply to manual differentiation. So I decided to call this back propagation versus forward propagation. Forward propagation, I don't know if it's a term, it's not the forward pass that we did so far. It's another way of computing the derivatives as I will explain immediately. So for our optimization, we said neural networks are basically a model, a loss function and an optimization. So for the optimization part, we usually use stochastic gradient descent. And for that, we need the gradient, we need the derivatives with regards to the network weights. So a good question to ask is why do we separate the algorithm into two parts? Why why do we first do a forward pass where we calculate all the intermediate quantities and then we do a backward pass where we calculate the derivatives? And it turns out we don't really have to do this. We could do everything. And by everything, I mean both calculating the function values and the respective derivatives in a single forward pass. So I want to show you how you could do this. And in the end, I want to show you why usually you don't do this. So going back to our example from before, we used this network, simple network. It has two hidden layers, um, sigmoid activation function. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So suppose I want to calculate the loss with regards to this first matrix of weights here, W1. Yeah, so I want to calculate the loss with regards to this W1. Um, I'm going to make a few changes. So, so I mentioned before that the real derivative, here we have a vector of three. Yeah? Disease is a vector of uh, one over three. So the derivative of that vector with regards to a matrix will be a tensor. I don't want that. So I'm going to change W. I'm going to flatten it and make it uh, a vector. And in order for it still to work and that I can still multiply it by axis, I'm also going to change axis and I'm going to change axis into this weird matrix which will allow me to actually preserve the right operations. So I'm flattening the weight matrix into a vector here, I'm augmenting the X vector into a matrix here. So the notation will change. Instead of having a vector of inputs times a matrix of weights, I will have a vectors of weights times a matrix of inputs. Okay, so this is how it would look if we also add the bias. And notice that this is what I will get. And if I denote it by z11, z12, and z13, because remember z1 is a vector of 1 over 3. Notice I'm getting exactly the same as before. So this is how I represented the operations before. And notice if I do this, I'm getting exactly these. Okay, you can double check me if you want. Okay, all the other operations. So everything um, continuing with the network stays the same. So this is still a matrix. This is still a matrix. Everything is okay. I'm now just interested with the derivative with regards to W1. And so I just flatten W1, the rest stays the same. Another thing I'm going to change is that before, when I took the derivatives of the A's with respect to the Z's, right? So there's the activation functions and they operate element-wise. And I said, okay, let's take the derivative. The derivatives are all also an element-wise operation. Well, I kind of cheated. Technically, what I should have done was to compute the whole Jacobian, okay? So I have this vector of three outputs, three activation functions, and these are the three inputs uh, of these activation functions. And if I would want to take the derivative of a vector with regards to a vector, I would get a matrix. I would get the Jacobian uh, matrix over here. But this Jacobian matrix is diagonal matrix. So this is what allowed me to basically say, instead of multiplying by a diagonal matrix, let's just do the operation element-wise. But for now, I think it will make more sense if we do look at it as a matrix operation, and you will see exactly why in a second. So going back to backpropagation, we are now taking the derivative of the loss with regards to our flattened uh, vector of weights, W1. And we said we are using the chain rule. It's basically equal to all of this. These are equal to this. I'm putting the matrices because they are important. We calculated also these, but um, they are not important right now. I want to focus on the shape 
of the operations. Okay, so we know what this is. We already calculated it in a previous video. Also, this the derivative of a sigmoid. It's just the sigmoid times one minus the sigmoid, etc. But I want to focus on the shapes here. So we have this vector that is one over six. We know the gradient also has to be a one over six vector. Uh, this was a one by one, yeah, the loss function with regards to the final activation. This was also one by one, the final activation with the final input to that activation. This was a one by three matrix after the transpose. This was now, yeah, and this is the important part. This is where we treated it before as a one by three vector and we said element wise operation. Let's treat it now as a diagonal matrix. Okay, so this is a diagonal matrix. Technically, this is also a one by one diagonal matrix, but let's ignore this. And this is a diagonal matrix. And finally, uh, if we take the derivative of Z1 with regards to W1, then by the same rules that I already specified in the video previously, we just have the matrix transpose, right? We have a row vector times a matrix. If we differentiate it with regards to the row vector, we got the matrix transpose, which will be this. So all the shapes uh, come out right, right? One by one, one by one. It will be one by one, then it will be one by three, it will be one by three, three by three, everything works out. And in the end, we have one by six. Perfect. So now let's look how we did the operations in backprop. In backprop, we did the operations from the final layer going backwards. Yeah. So we first did this times this, and then we took this times this, and then we took this times this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, here it has to be W small now. What we are going to do now, since we want to calculate everything as we go forward, is first calculate this, then calculate this, then calculate this, la 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 la, calculate this. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, we start with the first layer. We calculate what we, was the forward pass, yeah, the Z1, which is, was just this. Then we calculate the activations of this. Then we calculate the derivatives, which are these. And now we can introduce this uh, helpful notation as a delta dash, uh, which will be this times this, okay? And we can now discard everything that we don't need. Yeah, so we are moving forward. Uh, Z1 doesn't play any role anymore. We have A1, so we don't need Z1, we don't need X. Um, the derivatives up to this point are basically captured in this term over here, so we don't need these terms anymore, okay? Now that this is because we are only taking with regards to W1, if we would also take with regards to B1, maybe we would need another term, it doesn't matter, but right now we are focusing on W1. And moving to the second layer, we do exactly the same. We calculate Z2, we calculate A2, we, take, we calculate the derivatives, we again introduce this um, helpful notation delta dash 2, and we calculate it, and now we can discard all the unneeded quantities from before. And know that even if we now also want to, let's say, calculate uh, the derivative with regards to W2, then we could start the same process from here, okay? So we would do the same process from here and we could move forward. So this throwing out of unneeded quantities still works, okay? Even if we are doing it for all the weights, it will still work. So going back to focusing only on W1, uh, we continue on. Z3, A3, the derivative with regards to them, the intermediate uh, quantity, the loss, the derivative of the loss, and the final derivative that we need, the final gradient. And just note that this helpful notation, del uh, delta dash, is not exactly like the delta from before. It has a small change. So before it was delta k was equal to delta k plus one times this diagonal matrix or element-wise operation, however you want to see it times this matrix transpose. And this was because we first calculated the deltas that were more advanced, and then we went backwards. So we had the delta k plus one, and now we move to delta k. Here it's different. Here it's like we first have delta k minus one, we multiply it by this, and then we get the delta dash k. Okay, so just a small difference in notation, and that you don't think that the deltas from the backprop are the same deltas that I'm using here. Bottom line, it's completely possible. You can do everything in a single forward pass, compute both the quantities and their derivatives. So why don't we do it? Well, it turns out that the reason for it is numerical efficiency. And this has a lot to do with the ratio of input versus output of the neural network. 
So when you have a many to one network, which is what you usually have when you have a single loss function. Yeah, so if a neural network is composed of a network, a loss function, and an optimization, so you only have one loss in the end, you projected, you summarized everything into a single number, then you have a lot of inputs and the inputs here are the weights, okay? They are not the Xs. The inputs here are the weights. So you have a lot of weights and let's say in W1, you have six weights going in and one output going out. You wanna take the derivative of one number with regards to six weights. So let's calculate how much uh, calculation would be needed for back propagation and for forward propagation. Okay, so for back propagation, we start by multiplying scalars. It's just one operation. Then we do a scalar times a vector. It's just three operation. Then we do a vector times a matrix. It's just nine operation. And if you want a quick uh, way to compute this, is you can just ignore one of the dimension. Yeah. So if you have one, three, 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 it's just one times three times three. Okay. So this is nine operations. Another nine operation. Another nine operations. Eighteen operations. Overall, we had 49 multiplications, okay? And ignoring addition that also goes into it. In the forward mode, let's see what will happen. Well, we have, we first compute this matrix, this three by six matrix times this three by three matrix. So it will be three times three times six, 54 operations. Then we do it again, another 54 operations, another 54 operations, 18 operations, six and six. Overall, 192 multiplications. So when you have a function that takes many weights and produces one number, which is the loss, it's much, much more efficient computation-wise to do back propagation than to do forward propagation or forward mode differentiation. Notice that in reverse mode, there is some memory inefficiency because we can't just discard everything. We have to keep all the intermediate quantities. Yes, yeah? so when we were passing the network, we calculated the Z1s, and then the A1s, and then the Z2, and then the A2, we have to keep them at, in order that in the back propagation, we can use them to calculate the derivatives. So there is some memory overhead, which doesn't happen in forward mode. Okay, so this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you gained some more insight about neural networks, and I will see you in the next video.